Well, thank you, Alex. And Alex and I are really the you know, of this Alex session. isn't just the tech host, but we're the um, facilitators of this session, and and we're the company we make comprise Tenseg that's going to um, be responsible for refreshing the website and is responsible for the current website. Um, so this is a really small and intimate group. Um, uh, Andre, feel free to show yourself if you want, where uh, or not. Lakeisha's on here invisibly too. Um, but we are recording this so that a, a few other people we know of, like um, Elizabeth and Tom, who are interested but can't be with us, can also see what we're talking about and decide whether or not they want to participate in this website renewal committee. So um, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see a little um, presentation that um, Alex and I um, put together. So, um, you know, the web was created in 1993, or at least shared in 1993. Um, I was at MIT at the time and built my first website in 1993. But REA came to the web um, in 2001. And its first um, website looked something like this, um, which is pretty typical of websites at the time. In fact, pretty advanced because, hey, it had a logo. So that's that's good. <laughs> um, and then um, by around 2010, REA's website looked a little bit more like this. Um, and in some ways, this is where we are even now in terms of structure. Um, but then in 2011, um, we redesigned the website. Um, as I, it, I was involved at that point. Um, Tenseg didn't exist quite yet, but we redesigned the website in 2011. And this is the website that we have now and that you're probably familiar with. This website moved into WordPress um, and we intend to keep it in WordPress. Um, and uh, uh, it has the more or less the same structure. This is a screenshot from the early days. The structure's changed a little bit over time, but it's more or less the same. Um, this website was designed as a WordPress network, which means that we have actually a network of websites that are related to REA um, here. The ones you're most familiar with are meeting websites. So they share a lot in terms of look and feel with the main website but each meeting gets its own um, sort of color and um, uh, imagery to, to identify it. And then there are even a few specialized websites like the RAA Senior Scholars have a site of their own, very much not used. I mean, that's there, but they hardly update or do anything with it. So this network of sites, I don't know, we're probably up to like 16 websites that RAA has. Um, I think it's at least 20. Actually, um, in 2018, we also began to build a membership system for REA. Um, and this is a tool that most of you have not seen because it operates behind the scenes. So the REA staff have access to this when you renew your membership or add yourself as a member or otherwise make contact with REA. We can keep track of um, things. Um, we can have tags for what various members have been a part of, whether or not they've got an active membership plan, and so forth, what financial transactions there have been with them. Um, most recently, we also added a conference scheduling system to the site. And so you've all been using that for this conference. So that's a completely um, uh, home-built uh, for REA, uh, custom-built uh, conference site. We had used Sketched for a number of years, and we really liked Sketched in a lot of the way it worked, but we found it very problematic to maintain. It's actually um, painful to maintain Sketched schedules, and it didn't inter interact very well with some of what we did. So, um, uh, you know, we had a hard time what was painful was not so much scheduled as scheduled, but the API to use scheduled from other systems. Like we want to build proceedings from our schedule. We want to do, um, uh, we we reach into this data to do other things in other parts of REA. That was very difficult. So this um, custom built 
schedule is the most recent thing that we've added and and we're using it now for the second year i think um so last year the rea board asked for proposals to redesign the rea website and we responded to that request rea did get another proposal um at least one other um but the board selected us to do this work and and we've had as you can see a long history i mean over 10 12 years with rea now so um that wasn't too surprising because we bring a lot more to this than just the website um and that uh spoke to the board so they decided to go ahead with our proposal but one of the things that um we recognize is that you know we're not the experts on rea itself um we have a great deal of expertise in how to build and maintain a website but rea was simply asking for hey let's have a new website and that's not very meaningful um what what we really need to understand is why you know what what does rea want to do with its website what are the things that have served rea in the current website or not you know what do we want a new website to accomplish and we can't answer those questions very well um, because we're just the tech folks. Um, we can reality check a lot of expectations, but we can't answer these questions. And so we needed some people from REA to go on this journey with us and help us define what the new website ought to be, help um, uh, assess our work and tell us where we were on the right path and the wrong path as we move forward. Um, and participate in this process with us. And so part of our proposal to REA was that REA create this website renewal committee, um, that it include the two of us, so Eric and Alex, um, that it include REA staff, so Christine, Esser, and Lakeisha, um, and that it includes some of you. So we're looking for at least two or three people uh if more that's fine but at least two or three people who want to participate in this process um and be part of this website renewal committee so what is this committee um that's the main thing we want to tell you about this morning is what we're asking of you so to participate in this committee there'll be at least five zoom meetings throughout the next year that are probably two to three hours each where we discuss and plan for the new website. I'll say more about what those are in a moment. Um, you participate um, online in determining the structure and design of the new website. There's a stretch of time where we ask you to do some work um, and report to us. And then um, uh, you may be asked to create some of the content for the new website. So we may need some help writing up certain sections. If there's some new content that we need, we're not the ones who put the words on the website. You know, we, well, we can we can copy the words onto the website, but we don't write those words. Um, others have to come up with what we want to say or provide the imagery that we want to use or that kind of thing. So you might be asked to help with that. So the process um, in outline that we've proposed is here. It starts with this announcement at the annual meeting that we're doing right now. Um, thank you for being here, <laughs> being a part of that. Um, and then the creation of a committee. So one of the things we're asking of you today is that you um, think about whether or not you wanna be part of this committee. And if you do, you fill out a little form so we know you're interested. And then Lakeisha can look over all the people who are interested and see, you know, is this too many or, do you know are all of these people um appropriate or probably we're just going to take what we can get because we we want participation so if you sign up be ready to to be ready to be a part of this <laughs> then in august we're going to have an initial meeting um sometime on the week of probably august um 11th or so um and in that initial meeting um we will uh you know, it'll be a two or three hour meeting to ask a lot of questions about the site, um, what jobs you think REA is trying to do with the site to get some background and intentions 
um, and understand what the old site was doing. So somewhere in that week of August, we want to have that meeting. Then we, we will give you guys homework um, to consider what kind of content changes there need to be. We'll probably go through some exercises in that initial meeting too to help us you know, come up with a collective sense of you know, what we think the site ought to be. But then during the next um, month or so, we ask you to consider the kind of changes in content, maybe do some work with each other online. Meanwhile, what Alex and I will be doing is creating a working copy of the whole REA website that we can all fiddle with without affecting the live site so that we have a place to a sort of playground to work in. Um, so we'll be working on that copy. You'll be thinking about content changes. Then we'll have a meeting to share progress where you share with us what you've come up with content wise and we share with you the playground site. And then um, we will um, spend some time restructuring the membership. This is a task for us, Alex and I, um, to work on the new site because one of the things we've decided is um, probably overkill is this network of WordPress sites that we have. It means that we're spinning up lots of new WordPress sites every year. And we really don't need that. We can probably live within one WordPress site that's designed more carefully so that we can have sections for each REA meeting, but we don't need a whole slew of WordPress sites. So we need to redesign some things um, internally to make that work. We'll be doing some of that work um, and also implementing some of the changes to content on the working copy of the site. In January, we would expect to present that work as a more or less finished website. So during these months long period of work, we're not out of touch with you. You could you could expect email from us and email back and forth. It's just we're not meeting necessarily. But there'll be a lot of opportunity for feedback and and consultation. It'll just be via email. So then in January, we have another meeting of two or three hours where we present what is more or less a vision of the finished new site, but we expect there'll still be some, some critique and some items on a punch down list and things that we wanna change. So then we have a month or so, a month or two of finalization where we take those final needs that were uh, illuminated at the presentation meeting, we, we clean the rough edges off the site. And then in April, um, we will have a sign off meeting where REA agrees that, okay, this site is good to go live, then we roll it out. And then after it's rolled out, we'll have a kind of debriefing, a completion meeting where we debrief, think about what should be on REA's list for the future and um, celebrate, you know, that, that we're done with that work. So this is how we imagine the process rolling out. Um, it's a considerable amount of time. It's starting uh, this summer and going through next May. And you can see the meetings with the stars are those five meetings. Um, well, the meetings and then this considering content change is a little bit of work during um, the fall this year. So that's the process. The other thing that I can show you is in the proposal, which um, you can get access to this as part of the full proposal we made to REA, just want to show you some of what we recognized as issues on the website that we think ought to be addressed. And these may be different than some of what you're thinking about, but this is what we told REA we thought were some areas to consider. Um, content for non-members um, and content for members. There's It's hard to distinguish what content on the website is for members and non-members. And there's not like a member area. So it's hard as a member to know what special in the content you're getting, or as a non-member to know what will be restricted until you bump into it. Um, the navigation menus, you know, are they serving REA? Do, do they make sense to people? Does people know where to find things? The header and footer areas, are we using those well? Um, people seem to never be able to find, for instance, our password help, even though it's down there in the footer. So, you know, are we using this stuff well? The front page content, is it inviting? Is it doing the job REA thinks it needs to be doing? What, what does REA's first impression on the world want to be? 
color choices and imagery. Um, as I mentioned, the relation of the main site to the subsites, like those for annual meetings, that's something that we think we should change significantly. Um, and um, special accommodations for other kinds of devices. We've never, we've built the site all along to work on phones, but it's never been primarily a mobile site. And really the way people interact with the web these days is primarily mobile. So we really should make sure the site works well in mobile. And we've never really focused on that. We think that there are a few structural changes that need to happen, like, um, uh, developing a menu structure that can be available across all the pages right now because of these subsites, the menus change significantly every time someone jumps into one of those subsites. And so navigation can be confusing. Reuniting those subsites into a single site and simplifying the content of the site so that a reader doesn't get lost on a single page. Some of our pages can get very long and um, the pages themselves can be hard to navigate. Um, and then there's, you know, options to redesign the look and feel and improve the experience on mobile, enhance the ability to vary the theme within sections of the site so we don't need those subsites, ensure that the main landing page can more effectively celebrate and reflect events like the annual meeting. Right now, you might notice if you go to the main REA page, the annual meeting is just a little button. There's really nothing else that says, hey, we're in the middle of our annual meeting. So things like that, um, and make it easier to use um, imagery on the site. Right now, the website, um, the REA website, um, oh, that's in the other document. The REA website um, has this very narrow image at the top, this very ultra wide screen, much wider screen than you know your typical movie screen. It makes it very hard to find imagery that works in this kind of shape. So really we shouldn't be wed to this shape. That's been frustrating all along. Every meeting has to come up with some image that fits in that little shape, not to mention the same image has to work not in that little shape, like on a flyer. Um, and so that's just a constraint we don't need. So there are things like that that we want to um, fix too. So um, with that, um, let me just point out that we have a form at religiouseducation.net slash website and URL that should be easy to remember and that Alex is going to put into the chat as well so you can click on it. And that form simply asks you to put in your name and email address to pick whether you want to be a member of the committee or just have some questions or suggestions and then optionally to put in some text about um, uh, what interests or contributions you would bring to the committee and what questions you have um, about the committee or the website. So with that, that's all we have to say. What we want to do now is listen a little bit. Uh, we This session isn't going to go on super long. We've got probably 10 or 15 more minutes that we want to spend with you. We don't want to take up too much of your time um, this morning or evening, but we want to hear your questions and, and what interest you bring and what concerns you have about the website. So I open this up to you all. Feel free to unmute and and join in. Uh, hi, Eric uh, and Alexandra. Thank you so much for all your work. And I actually joined here to suggest an idea. As a student rep, I'm wondering if it is possible uh, if the website has a, a session for students gathering so we can like exchange some informations and uh but only for the members to see so because even though i gather some information about like students contact information but since like we every day every year we have a new members and also like some students um graduate so their status changes so i i think if we have uh, a session to communicate among students, that would be really great. But I, I want to just see if that's, uh, that is the possible. So, yeah, uh, the thing I want to be careful about is, is expectations that the REA website become sort of a social space or social network. That's very hard to pull off. Um, and, and 
so I think what would be um, reasonable to expect is that we could create a members only student space where there are announcements and things and resources for students, but I wouldn't expect too much conversation. I think what we need to do to facilitate conversation and mm -hmm. uh, sort of a meeting hub mm -hmm. is to decide where we want to do that. And REA has made a number of attempts at this in the over the years. And the most recent one is just a few months ago, the uh, a number of the, uh, I guess the REA board or someone decided we should try Discord. And so we set up a Discord server for REA. And I don't mm -hmm. know, um, Graham, if you're familiar with Discord as a tool. No, actually, I'm not. <laughs> uh, it's sort of, I don't know if you've heard of Slack or other, there are other tools like this, but what, what Discord is, I can, I can probably show you briefly, because um, I'm still screen sharing, aren't I? So let me pull up. Um, oh, except it's going to open. Mm, mostly wants to open, open it. It's opening it no, in the window. Yeah, okay. So, so okay. Discord is simply a tool like this. Um, and uh, you're in the REA when in fact. So if you're in the REA, <laughs> you can have um, conversations like our meeting planners can have conversations about the meeting that's coming up, or the steering committee could have conversations that are relevant to the steering committee, or the regional gatherings you can see haven't picked up on this yet. Um, so something like this is a place where you can have real conversations. And I, is that more of what you're thinking about or what, what kinds of resources are you thinking about? Yeah, I think, I mean, this is actually, this is great. I haven't seen this. Uh, what, do, what do you call this program again? So this is called Discord. Um, Discord. And I'm trying to see if they give us their name anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the name on this on this website. That's interesting in terms of marketing. But in any case, that is what, what I would imagine, Ram, is what we do is in the in like a member section for students. One mm -hmm. of the things that would be there is a resource is, hey, join our Discord server. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a channel here for students. Mm -hmm. And then there could be a conversation here. And, and you could start up new channels whenever you wanted about certain topics. Mm -hmm. This can be a really lively resource. It has not been really lively yet because the people who are here just aren't focused on it. It takes a community actually getting enthusiastic and adopting it. Mm -hmm. So that would be up to the community whether that happens or not. But yeah. but um, Discord is inexpensive. The RAA, RAA doesn't really have to pay much to make this work. It doesn't have to pay anything initially. Mm -hmm. um, cool. It's very easy to manage. Um, so it's easy to put up. So I would think trying to encourage students here and you create invites on discord so you could have like the rea planning group is actually mm -hmm. limited not everybody can go here it's there's a little tiny lock next to the um oh, okay. uh, pound sign that tells you that so you can have discords that are like limited to students by putting the invite only on the student page and then you'd know that only students are getting that invite and coming in or somehow doing that, or you could have something that's open to everybody, but focused on students. Gotcha, gotcha, oh. cool, cool. Thank you so much. Then uh, one more question, then uh, is that possible to uh, make a link on the RDA website to yes. connect the Discord? Oh, okay. Yes, and, and the good news about this, if you wanna try this, we could do this next week. We don't have to wait for the new website. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in trying this for students, um, okay. get in touch with, with Alex and I. Um, sure. We're at tech at religiouseducation.net. And okay. um, just let us know you want to set this up. And we could even do a Zoom with just you so you can learn it and then you know, okay. help people participate. And, and this does not have to wait till next May. We could do this right away. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Actually, and I'm uh, also like next to next student rep is going to be Unjin John. So I probably need to talk with Unjin John first. Well, <laughs> but I see Unjin John is here. So what do you think, Unjin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you, you don't have to, you don't have to answer right away, but like, it, this is just what I have thought about. So maybe we can talk more about it when we have doctoral student gathering. Sounds great. Thank you for bringing up this one. <laughs> For finishing your work. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is actually a really great idea. Yeah, thank you so much.
Okay. Other questions? Hi. Um, thank you for your robust, um, and I've been listening in, and I, I, I've been running around doing stuff in the house. Uh, it is it's 8.30 here in Chicago. So <laughs> It's 8.30 here uh, in St. Paul, too. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. So it's still the beginning of the morning. You're in good company. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I was just listening in, and I'm really encouraged by your um, uh, your proposal and what you're trying to do, uh, your plan for revamping the website. A um, couple of things um, as to uh, to increase the social um, component of the website. Um, isn't it possible? Um, I've seen this on various other websites for there to be connection to LinkedIn um, on the website. Um, I think that would be a wonderful way because, I mean, like you said, you know, it, to try to create another social um, media web uh, component capability for the website is redundant. Um, but there, you know, LinkedIn is typically the um, the uh, the source by which their um, professionals are uh, connecting. Uh, so that could be a really great if that's possible. Um, and then two, um, I noticed that on the website, it is very difficult for me to know whether or not I am a member or not. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, 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 I could not figure it out for the life of me, whether I was a member or not, if my membership had expired, if, um, if uh, my membership was still active. Um, and I'm not sure if you've noticed that or not, but that's a, that was a big, that was a big concern for me. Cause I was like, did I pay for membership or not? You know, <laughs> did I do that already? You know, sometimes I'm so, sometimes doing so much. I sometimes forget. I know for, I'm a member of, um, the NCTE, um, National Council of Teacher, Teachers of English. And they have this, 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 like you said earlier in your talk. Um, they have this thing where you it's members only. Uh, if you're not a member, you can't access that. Uh, and, there, and or even you can go on there and you can see the status of your membership, um, how long you've been a member, you know, uh, uh, what kind of membership, what, what kind of membership do you have? Um, and for those of us who are doing multiple things and multiple organizations, that's really, really helpful to be able to say, okay, well, I'm a member, you know, I, this is my member number, like a member, like you said, uh, membership hub, but so specifically me, having that kind of information. Let me show you, Andre, Alex and I, part of what we're thinking about is uh, we've built a site for another organization called Team RCIA. And at Team RCIA, if you come as a, if you just come to the website, it has a presentation that's like, very much geared at someone who's not a part of the organization yet, right? Yeah, that, I love that. That sort of advertises what we're about and tries yeah. to encourage people to participate, right? But if you are yeah. a part of the organization already, when you, you there's a real clear login button, and when you log yeah. in, when when you log in, and you come to the site, this yeah. is the same page, the same homepage. Yeah. Yeah. But when yeah. you're when you're logged in and you're a member. You know you're a member because it says hello to you. There's your account. It shows you other information that is unique. To you. It shows you news that is for members only. It's a whole, you don't even see the sort of advertising page. You see mm -hmm. this information. REA site could be like this. You know, it could be, a, it, it, this is part of the conversation. We don't have time enough today. But if you want to be part of this conversation, get on this committee, because that's what we want to talk about at that first meeting. How do we want REA's website to serve members and to reach out? And how yeah. Do, yeah. one might be to do something that's clearer so that when you're when you're coming in as a newcomer, you get one whole piece of, you know, things that welcome you and tell you where to begin and what we're about. But if you are a member you log in and it's not just waiting for a meeting to come where you notice oh my gosh i haven't renewed my membership it's something that you see all all the time you know so anyway that's just a, a quick glimpse of what might be possible in in that regard yeah that's actually really great um i i, I fully could that's a wonderful website for, first of all it's aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing and calm um, but also that member hub place is 
is um, is quite big um, in being able to, first of all, know that I'm a member. <laughs> but right. two, you know, there's some things that as a member, I don't need to see because I already know the organization, right? Or I'm familiar with the organization. Um, but for instance, there's one thing that I was thinking about is like, how do I, how can I get more involved um, in the organization? Uh, right. And there is no real way for there to, I mean, I'm just finding out about some of the committees by being in the annual meeting. Um, and that's not present on the website. Uh, like what committees do we have? Um, is that, uh, what are they doing um, for me to get in? Cause I want to get involved, I just don't know how. Uh, so how can we make that more uh, interactive uh, and accessible for uh, members uh, who really want to get involved, who want to contribute to the organization. Yep. Yeah. We hear you. Okay. Um, I'm noticing a question from Emily here yeah. that says, um, she has two questions. One, do you want people on this committee who are very familiar with the website or not, or both? I'd say either is fine. You don't have to be familiar with the current website. In fact, if the current website confuses and befuddles you, that's fine. You know, we're trying to make the website mm -hmm. better. On the other hand, being familiar with it might help us pull, you know, you might know where some deep resources are that need to be lifted up, and that would be helpful too. So I think both is fine. And her second question is, is this a good place to recommend that we have a member-only place to share syllabi in an easy-to-search format? I'd love to be able to share what we are teaching. Yeah, this is a great place to mention things like that. It's not clear to me whether that becomes a resource that we build just on the website, or if that's a, you know, a pointer to something else in some way, you know, in the same way that Discord might be a place to do social stuff. Maybe there's a, an, a better site on which to do this syllabi assembly and we point to it. I don't know the answer to that, but this is the right place to raise that as a kind of resource you'd like to have so that we think about how we might implement something like that. So yeah, sure. Um, Thank you. I was thinking about the Wabash Center where they have like lots of syllabi where people can go. It's not members only, which I feel a little iffy about just because of intellectual property. But um, I'm just thinking it, it's not that easy to search there and it's hard to find stuff that's specific to religious ed. Um, but they just have PDFs that you can search and look at based on course subject. So that's kind of what I was thinking about, but easier to search <laughs> yeah i mean that's a good pointer and we're familiar with wabash and can ask um mary to help show us that that resource too but um yeah it's 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 always tricky how much development you want to do in building a system like that or whether you can lift it up in some other way um, but i think it's absolutely the right thing to do to bring that up as a as a desire um so thank you Hey, Any Eric. Questions? Yeah, I had a I had a question and maybe it's in the proposal already, which I'm happy to look at later. But I'm curious about um had have, have y'all already like thought through or captured the we'll say the various roles or stakeholders that participate in this website and um how are you planning on checking in with all those folks or is the hope that we'll end up with a representative sample that volunteers from the committee and just go with that? That's a great question, Kimball. We do not have something as clear as that at REA. Okay. We want something like that. So uh, part of our thinking was, boy, these things are popping up too much. Let's go away. At that, and I'm not going to point at it, but at that initial meeting, we want to Try to that's some of the exercises we said we try to go through in those two or three hours is to identify some of those stakeholders. And then that is exactly part of the job when you're considering content changes that we would ask you, the the sort of REA membership part of this uh, renewal committee, to reach out to some of those stakeholders and get from them a sense of what's important. Um, because that has not been done in a very clear way yet. We we guess at it. We sort of throw darts and guess, and the board guesses, and everybody thinks they know. But but we haven't done that very systematically. Um, so that would be part of that work during those couple of months. Is to mm -hmm. during that meeting is to sort of come up with a a list we can sort of 
uh, have a consensus about and then reach out to those stakeholders um, during the during the time we're doing some of the tech work, you can do some of that legwork. Mm -hmm. But it's not in the proposal that way. There's nothing clear in the proposal about that, but that is our intention for that. Well, I think it was also part of the help for the committee though, too, Eric, was to try to have as much representation on the committee. But of course, you know, that right. goes if we can have, but if we can have some of those stakeholders represented on the committee, that's really helpful because right. we'll be kept more honest, but we're not sure how many of you are gonna join or if that'll be yeah. representative. We yeah, don't know. Exactly. Thank you. Other questions? So we would really love um, for you to consider filling out our little form at the uh, religiouseducation.net slash website. Um, that religiouseducation.net slash website will be the URL that we will eventually put more information at um, as the committee does its work. Right now, it's just the form. Um, we plan to use um, this CODA. This is um, a tool called CODA. We plan to use this to work on the process and the tasks. We put the presentation here. Any of you who are interested, we can um, give you a link to this uh, process um, document as well. Uh, in fact, if you sign up as interested in one way or another. If you're going to be on the committee, you'll have access to this whole process document, but there'll be much more as we go on. Because as like, if we come up with a list of stakeholders, we'll put it here. If we come up with a sort of structured document or wireframes, we'll put it here. All of that will be shared openly here as we progress. So um, with that, I'll stop sharing the screen. Uh, we are almost at the end time, but are there any last minute questions or are you guys interested? Who's interested in being a part of this? All right, Andre, Kimball, great. So I'll put the link in the chat again so you can fill out. Alex is, is putting the link in the chat again. Um, we're really glad to hear that. We've got a couple of people we know were interested um, uh, who couldn't be here today. Um, so you'll be hearing more from us within, I think, two weeks. Within, We got to sort of wrap up the conference and debrief from that, and then we're going to turn our attention this way. So, and Esser, so nice to see you here. <laughs> we're glad to, that you're on board soon. Esser starts as the interim um, networking coordinator in August, so she'll be a part of this committee um, as a, what do you call that? when someone's got a, because of their job, they, she doesn't have a choice. She's stuck with us. So. <laughs> but all I'm right. happily stuck with you all. So. Well, and I mean, it's also stuck with us because honestly, the networking coordinator is most of the editing of the website and mine's and that on a daily basis. So, yeah. you know. You'll have to live with You'll the website to... as whatever we Well, do. actually this is kind of an odd year for that because with us so big interim for a year, the for a year we're doing this, you know, Esther, you'll kind of have to live with some combination of both. And the, Esther may not have to live with it, but she can escape. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll see. yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. And we are really looking forward to working with you. And even if you're not, if you want to just be regularly updated, feel free to use the form to say that you're you know, if you ask any question on the forum, even if you say you're not interested in being on the committee, we're going to put you on a little list of people who we keep informed about the process just so we get more input over time. So feel free to uh, connect that way too. But we're really glad you were here this morning, evening, afternoon, whenever it is in your time zone and um, look forward to working with you.